So I was doing some refactoring in my URL shortening app and more, more specifically how to implement type safety in my Next.js server actions between the front end and the back end. And I found a really cool way. So I'm going to show it to you in this video. Let's dive in. I'm actually using the ZSA package right here. And ZSA, I think, stands for Zod Server Actions because it combines the uh, server actions for Next.js and the Zod package to provide uh, input validation, output validation, type safety, the whole thing. So, for example, in this file, and I am currently in the app slash lib, and actually let me add myself there, app slash lib slash ZSA procedures. So in this file, I am creating procedures. And what procedures are is a way to group multiple server actions and define some commonalities between them. Uh, let's check out. Let's check out this one for. So this is the authenticated procedure. It uses the create server action procedure method that comes from the ZSA package, and it defines a common handler, which you can think about it as as a middleware, right? So all of this is going to happen before our actions get executed. So this is like a step zero for all of our server actions that we're going to create from this procedure. And yes, procedures create actions. That's the that is the concept there. So for all of my or so for all of my server actions that I'm going to create from this procedure, I want to instantiate Superbase. I want to get the currently logged in user. If there is no user or if there's an error while getting the user, I want to redirect to sign in. And then at the end I'm returning an object that contains the user and the Superbase instance. And this authenticated procedure is being used in my uh, collections slash actions.ts file. So this is a file where I'm defining all of the common uh, server actions for the collections. Collections are like collections of links in my application. So here's the procedure in action. I'm using the authenticated procedure here, and then I'm invoking the create server action method to create a server action from it. So that it also includes the handler, right? And here's where the fun begins. This is where I'm defining the input for this server action. So this server action is a create collection. I want this server action to receive a specific type of data, specific schema, specific shape of data. And I'm using Zod to define that input schema. And this is just plain Zod. This is a fairly um, simple schema. But if you know Zod, you know that you can define your custom uh, error messages, uh, custom validation like min max, number of characters, or uh, transforms, etc. Yeah, this is just plain Zod. It's a plain Zod object that validates the input. And then there's the handler for the action, right? At this point, in the first line of the handler of the action, we know that the handler of the procedure has already uh, passed. Because if we reach this point, that means that we have the Superbase instance and the user. And we can obtain them from the CTX for context um, argument right here. If you want to grab the input, the validated input, it's here in the input argument alongside with the context. So that's basically how we can validate the input, throw an error if we send something else to this action. Uh, if not, we'll just have it here. So here's the title and also the, the optional description um, property that we have defined from the input schema. And this is what this is everything that happens on the server side. Now this create collection action is being used in a client component. Here it is. It is a use client at the top. It is a client component. It is a dialogue that basically renders the form. I'm using React hook form, by the way. It renders the form and it uses that uh, action to create the collection. So here it is right here. ZSA comes with a use server action hook, which actually comes from a package that you need to additionally install. There it is. 
called zsa-react. You need to additionally install this package if you want to use the hooks. And I do want to use the hooks because they make my life easier. Check this out. I'm using the use server action here. I'm passing the server action as its first argument. And then in the second argument, I have an opportunity to execute whatever I want, depending on the lifecycle or depending on the outcome of the server action. So for example, if the server action throws an error, I want to show a toast. Or if the server action uh, succeeds or like uh, invokes successfully without throwing an error, I just want to show the toast and also close the dialog. How cool is that? And then this hook gives us the execute method, which we can just invoke to trigger the server action. The cool thing about Zod is that it also plays nicely with React hook form. So I'm using React hook form. And as you can see here, I'm using the very same input schema to also validate the input in the form on the client side, right? So we had the input defined on the server action. We make sure that, you know, the shape adheres to this schema, but using the same schema and React hook form, we can also make sure that we're sending the, the data in the exact same shape. So I'm reusing the input schema right here. I have my form right here and the on submit argument, I'm calling the handle submit, I'm getting the values which are also typed because we use the, the same so Zod schema on the form as well. And then I'm just invoking the execute method that we received from the use server actions hook. And I'm passing the values in. For example, if we were to do this manually, we have the types here. We can pass, we must pass the title and we can optionally pass the description as well. That's what we defined. So this is how I have achieved full end-to-end -end type safety on the client side and on also um, on the server side and also validation using Zod, uh, React hook form and the ZSA package. But the ZSA package goes a few miles further. Let me show you this. If we go back to the ZSA procedures file, we're going to see that we have a different procedure called owns collection procedure. It invokes the same create server action procedure method, but it also passes the authenticated procedure as the argument. Whereas, for example, in the authenticated procedure, we had no arguments in, in this function. So what this does is that it chains the new procedure with the old procedure. So when we create server actions from the owns collection procedure, they're going to inherit everything from the authenticated procedure. And in this procedure, I want all of the server actions to include a fingerprint input, which is going to be the collection fingerprint. And I also wanted to, um, and I also want them to have a specific handler defined. So what happens is I'm obtaining the user and Superbase instance from the context, which come from the authenticated procedure because we're chaining it. And then I'm trying to get the existing collection. We have the fingerprint and we're grabbing that from the input itself. We have the created by from the user and we also have Superbase because the authenticated procedure returned it. So in this procedure, aside from just making sure that the user is authenticated, I also make sure that um, any actions or mutations performed on a specific collection are performed on the on a collection that the user owns. So I don't have to do this in every action. I'm doing the validation here and then I'm returning the user, the super base and also the existing collection. So if we take a look at where this action is being used, we can see that we use it in the update collection action right here, the delete collection and the toggle collection published and also the add link to collection. So these four server actions mutate the collections table, but I'm making sure that all of the collections that are mutated actually belong to the user and that the user is authenticated. So if you open, for example, the update collection action, we're going to see there's the input and the input must 
contain the fingerprint string in the object here. And from the context, I'm also obtaining the existing collection, which comes from the owns collection procedure, while these two, the user and superbase, were from the authenticated procedure. So I don't have to do any validation here when it comes to does the collection exist, does the user own the collection, etc. This way, in my action, I'm only doing the actual mutation. So this way, my code is much cleaner now, and I get to do the validations in one place, and all of my actions are going to just simply inherit the validations. So yeah, you can check out the ZSA package at zsa.vercel.app. It does more stuff, like it, it also integrates with React Query. You can also pass form data instead of an ordinary input, and pass the server action to the action property of the form directly. You can define certain timeouts on actions or on procedures so that all of the actions that belong to that procedure will inherit that timeout. There's like callbacks and these are specific methods for every action or procedure if we want to perform certain logic with more granularity. And there's also retries. I haven't used the timeouts or retries, but you might need them. So go check out ZSA's docs. And that was pretty much it. That's how I achieved full end-to-end -end type safety and also validation using ZSA, using Zod, and using React Hook Form. And now my code is much cleaner. So I hope you liked this video. Uh, like and subscribe, share it with your friends. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care.